Right, there is a massive, massive mountain of information in this one. Um, so it might be worth watching right to the end if you're interested in plumbing and getting water down here in the most economical way to heat and the regs and stuff like that. Um, so keep watching. Right, back, um, back from seven days of 30 degree plus heat to raining again in Leeds, standard. Um, just, just come out of the gym, obviously um, shifting all them blocks and moving all that weight has made me lose some weight and going on holiday and drinking and eating has made me put it right back on again, which is massively disappointing. I can't tell you how much I'm pissed off about that. But, 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 um, you know, I got rid of it fairly quickly. I, I lost nearly, I think it was, uh, I got, I found a picture this morning, I think I weighed 13 stone, nine pounds. Now that is fat as fuck for my height. And I got down to 12, 12, I think it was 12, 12. And now when I got on yesterday, I have to come back from holiday, 13, six. So back on it now, we need to smash this gym. We need to smash this bloody building out the ground as well because funds are starting to run low. Um, and we'll talk about the dating scene as well. It's still on it. So we'll talk about that later as well. I've got quite a lot to do today, although I won't be actually doing anything on the build. Need to order some more stone, get measured up for my sand, see if I can get the right quantity of that. Stone, I'm, I'm, I'm easy about that. More is better because I've got loads of places to get rid of it. Sand, not so much because it's river sand as well, unless I save it for flagging later on. It's going to be of no use to me, really. Um, so I want to get that quite accurate. I need to get my insulation ordered and all. Probably go pick up some Visqueen. And surprise of all surprises, if you've followed me for some time, you know that... The one of the vans, um, someone got nicked a while ago, that never showed back up, and then one, the engine just died, um, wet belt or something like that, no nothing about vehicles, wet belt, destroyed the engine, that cost me best part of £7,000, and within six months it went again, something called a ben ben um, belt tensioner or something, so that fucked the engine as well. Um, so that's fixed, so it's been off the road eight weeks, I think, eight weeks, so that's back on track now, picking that up Wednesday hopefully, uh, so we'll be able to start picking stuff up as well, which is good. Today we're going to go meet Paul, now as I said previously before, there is nothing that Paul doesn't know about plumbing that isn't worth knowing, um, and he's going to talk me through some things, got a few questions for him that I want some advice on, because obviously I want this annex to be... Although it will be it will be contained to the house, I also want it completely self sufficient. We've got the things like hot water that we need to talk about because like there's little point in connecting it to the combi in the house because time you call for heat down at the annex, by the time the hot water's got there, you'll have finished washing your hands or filling your washing up bowl or whatever it is you're doing. So I'm going to try and find some economical solution around that. Also water pressure. Um, there will be no gas going down there um, and we're going to talk about waste pipes as well um, and how we're going to run them so we'll go meet Paul at some point today I've got to go pick up all the raffle prizes so if you've entered the raffle the raffle's still on there's six amazing prizes plus plus somebody's going to take on the DeWalt bundle it's absolutely massive so I'm going to go get all that because obviously I'm going to leave that in my house when I'm going away um, so that's locked up in a container so i'll go pick that up and we will we'll, what we'll do as well today we'll work out some facts and figures um because i was looking through it last time and with the blocks and um the blocks alone and the sand and cement i think it equated you know the footing blocks it equated to i think it was like 14.7 ton that i've moved around so i'm gonna try and um quantify everything and give you some facts and figures because today's just a washout again i was like i can't believe this weather it's like this all summer now isn't it i mean when did we have some nice days maybe one or two anyway that's it that's the joys of british weather i guess or oh, certainly this year anyway because i don't know what's happening right what we've done then <clears throat> that one there obviously needs two inches of sand in it, river sand, grit sand, whatever you want to call it. This one here needs stone, which I need to get up to that level there. No, that level there. Let me double check that measurement. Yeah, that level there. Um, I've really got a bit of stone in, but it's not been whacked down. So I need some more stone for this. So obviously online calculator works out how much aggregate you need, but what it doesn't account for is how much it's going to whack down. So what we're going to have to do is order a little bit more unless I can find some which says how much it'll whack down but I guess that depends got a lot of variance on that maybe I don't know um, but I'm going to get another couple of ton anyway because I've got to get some down the back there some down that side there's shit loads to go on there so we'll get the stone order for that we'll get the sand order for that and then tomorrow if it comes tomorrow we can start getting it in 
um, but you see it's rained quite a lot um, but it's not looking bad I didn't expect to be water inside them I guess I don't, I'm not sure why I did but because it had rained quite a lot here I thought there'd be water inside the cavity because it's got nowhere to go but I guess it's just soaked into bricks or blocks and then evaporated one another um, but everything's looking as it was left need to get this fence sorted daughter. Um what I will do probably because I'll just put the fence post in and then I'll backfill this bit here there's a good loads of um Loads of midgy lava in there as well. Um, it's probably about eight inch water in there. So I need to get that back filled, get a couple of posts in there, and then at least it looks like I'm making a start with it. But obviously if I put the fence in, I'm not gonna be able to brick it. So I need to brick up that side first and block it up as well. So there's a bit of time before that fence is going in. So if you're waiting for that, then you need to keep watching because it will happen. Um, tan's looking good, I think. Right, I've done the sums. The sums say I need five ton of stone in here. I need um, a three tonne of sand between both of them. So what I'm going to do, um, I've rung Salcos, they wanted, let me tell you, because it's quite a difference this. They wanted um, 45 pounds 60 a tonne bag, which is only 850 kilos anyway of for hardcore and the same price for sharp sand. So the quantities I needed then, I was looking at like 364 pound 80 for the stone and the sand and it is not tonnage either, it's 850 kilos is what you get in a bulk bag. So I've rung Mons, which is a local quarry. Um, they do a recycled stone, which is what's gone in there. Absolutely fine, nothing wrong with that. Um, and they do a recycled washed grit sand as well. He says everybody's using it now for block paving on and this purpose, you know, down before the insulation goes down, stuff like that. So we're going for that as well. So their cost with delivery is 221 pounds pound 40 as opposed to 364 pound 80 so the maths there is like 140 quid difference which is a good old saving so morns are delivering the only downside to that is um they'll be tipping it straight on the street which is fine because you get you're getting your tonnage then rather than 850 kilo bag um so i'm gonna have to shovel that round but it is where it is that's fine did it did 10 ton here so it's not a problem we'll crack on with that that's coming tomorrow the stone's coming tomorrow the sand's coming friday but i'm you now need to address um well, watch the watch this coming video now and you'll know what I need to address with this plumbing as well, so. Right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go up and see John. Um, John and David on the job they're on and see what they're up to because it's gonna be a bit of a slow day for me today and I'm not seeing them in a while, so we're gonna go up and catch up with them, have a look at their job um, and see how things are going for them. So some of you will remember this job. Um, me, John and David come and started this job. I can't even remember how long ago it was. It was a long time though. Um, it was a bare unit. It had it started, it left dormant for maybe a year, year and a half. Um, this was the garage area, because some of you remember there was like a garage folding up door that went there. And this opening here, it was divided in two. So that was a garage door. There was a pillar there. And then there was supposed to be going to be some bifolds. And what he did then, he got the top floor fully tiled. Yeah, like you do fully tiled with underfloor heating in and then he's decided that he wanted this opening taken out so we had to protect all that we got the steel in i'm going to guess john was it half a ton it was a minimum half a ton wasn't it i mean there, there were six of us on it at one point and we struggled to get it where we needed to but did that managed not to break any tiles it seems like john and davy have been here for ages but they haven't because there's another house up there uh, they've converted in that into um hmo is it HMO? Yeah, our beds. Yeah. House of HM. Anyway, it's, there's three different beds that's in it. So they've been there, been here, been everywhere else, and it's almost finished. So I'll let John and David talk you through because you've not seen them in ages. Right, John, talk us through the kitchen. What's been going on? Right, so as Liam left, he left it 70% uh, done, so he did do most of the work. How would he even say 70%? Well, 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 whatever, but um, since he's left, we've um, put the cooker hood on. This nice cooker hood, it's designed to actually stay closed where a lot of them do open when you're using them and then when you've finished, you then close it. But this one's designed to work while it's closed. We've put the hob in. We didn't plumb it up, but we've put it in. We've also put the LEDs under here, which Liam did do once, but we had to take off again. Because why, the, why did you have to come off your Because the, <laughs> the customer who, who, who's got us to do this changes his mind an awful lot. And we always do things ten times. Well, you can't remember, can you? No. Like... The granite, the joint the wrong place. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. So if you come over here, you, you can see here. There's a joint 
and it's central to the hub. The joint was over here somewhere. And looked a dog. And it, yeah, so the customer wasn't happy, rightly so. So when I took these LEDs off from underneath, with they lost all the stickiness and they didn't work, so we had to replace them. We've put this splash back on as well, also painted it all up, so it looks nice now. We've put these posh roller blinds on the doors. Let's go over before you go there, let's talk about the colour of the walls. How many times it changed? So originally painted oh, yeah. white. Right, okay. So this wall did start off white and then the customer changed his mind and wanted anthracite grey. So Liam went to uh, BQ, got me some anthracite grey. We painted it in that colour, which you've probably seen on a few of the videos. But the paint wasn't very good. It was chipping off and by the time Liam had got his carcasses in and stuff like that, it just looked a dog. So we decided to change the brand of paint, but the customer being the customer also decided he wanted to go black. So this is a completely different colour, but in all fairness, I do think it looks absolutely loads better. So the black lights in the ceiling, have you changed them? They want black of it. No, oh, they've, they've been changed as well, yeah. The, the, the customer, the, another reason why we've been here for a just, while. Just, yeah, this customer is not just a customer, he's a mate of ours, isn't it? Yeah, right. So, oh, okay, this, this customer, friend of ours, friend of Liam's for a long time, he tends to change his mind a lot. Um, so you end up doing a job where it might take you a week, it'll take you three weeks because you've done it three different colours, three different ways and every way you can think of. But there you go, he's the customer and he's right. Uh, what we're going to talk about, the blinds now, I'll show you these blinds. These blinds are fantastic. Uh, they are wireless, I'll just shoot one for the video but you can see. You charge them up once or twice a year with an iPhone cable and you can just control them individually with an app. Or you can do it with a remote control, which we also got supplied. How that, much? Uh, there was £1,150, including VAT. Uh, that was installed and everything, though. And they are big doors. What size doors are them? Five metres or something five, like that? I think they were 5.6. I can't remember now. I think they were 5.6. The central light above the island. No, um, no yeah. addition. Liam, they won't hear you. Have you got a mic on? No, but they all right, okay. So, yeah, I've also changed this. This wasn't even in not that long ago, uh, but Yorkie decided that he wanted a light above the island and Bank Centre was going to crash into the Velux. Um, so we've put it on. It's just ever so slightly off by a few mil, and I've put it on the best I can, and the customer got this light. It, that is also Wi-Fi. We can change colours on that and do it. Yeah, you can do all sorts on that as well. We've also, we can, we've put LEDs under the cabinets as, yeah, as well, you can have a look quite large, you know. And you can, uh, we've got Liam also had a good idea to run it through here, so we can see it through the glass panel. We've also got LEDs under the island, under this side. They're on, are they on back as well? Yeah, right. Right. Oh, no, yeah, and they're, they're them under the front. We was going to put them under the kickboard, but we decided not to. Um, what else can I say, Liam? Tell us about the problems. Why didn't you wash the machine? Why didn't the dishwasher go back properly? All right. So, I actually called Liam in, which you never saw. Tell us about the plumber job and the problems. Yeah, well, I am going to tell him, but as I'm, I'm going to go on to it, don't worry. So, I actually called Liam in because I've never done a dishwasher before. So, I just needed a bit of assistance. Um, but when Liam got here, we both pulled it out and we looked at the plumbing at the back of the dishwasher I don't know if Liam will have any videos or pictures of it and basically the plumber has gone and put a big pile of pipes and stuff like that at the back of the dishwasher and they're not back to the wall so when I've tried to push it in basically the little cutout at the back of the dishwasher has still caught the pipes so that was number one issue uh, and it also caused me an issue here on the door for the inset washer same thing um, I managed to take it out and stack the pipes on top of each other and cable tie them up and I've managed by the skin of my teeth just to get them in just <laughs> the skin of my teeth <laughs> um, any more problems no. yeah fridge fridge and doors oh fridge and doors yeah so so basically Yorkie bought 70 30 doors which Liam had already put on here before he left uh, the, we didn't have the fridge though, he just put the doors on. So when Yorkie got this fridge, he brings this fridge in. So I put the fridge in, come to put the doors on. And of course, as it's a 50-50 fridge freezer, the doors didn't fit. So I had to um, go get some new doors and put them on also. That's number 28 problem. Any more did we have? Um, steel's having, having, having to pay for steel. Oh. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, we'll just quickly talk about these steels. These steels, the amount of work that's actually, the LEDs are on, but I don't know if you'll see them. Yeah, um, they're all changed colours as well. They're all done bit phone. We've painted these steels, I don't know how many times. I've only, Dave has just painted them within the last week again. Um, with actually a different, instead of a matte paint, he's used a silk this time. Um, so they've been painted loads also. I, I've also skirted it up, Liam wasn't here, he wasn't skillful enough to do the skirting, so he left me doing that. So we've skirted the old building. Liam put the doors on, I architrived the opening there, which needs a door at the top. We've finished, but we haven't quite finished, but near enough finished. We've also, if you come over look here in the bathroom, Liam also put all the door door stuff on. I put this on, professional job. So this is the shower screen which we put in, me and Joe, we put it in a few days ago. This was a right mission to get in. We had to chop it down and all sorts to get it to fit into the gap. But if Liam comes in now, you'll see it looks absolutely fantastic. Is that colour changing on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all colour changing, yeah. Everything's colour changing. This mirror does light up, but the guy who put it on, we can, if you look, I can see myself, but the customer came in and he was down here and he said, Joby, I can't see myself. So it actually needs lowering. Yeah, um, never get a tall guy to fit a mirror over But I, I never put it in. Liam put all this toilet and sink in. What about this? Because that's been annoying since it was done, hasn't it? It has, yeah. And uh, the only person I could think put that in was a lad called Liam. I don't know who right. he is, but... <laughs> what happened is, um, if you've ever fit one of these, so this plastic box comes out the wall, and I wrote on the plasterboard, tile, no greater than three mil away from it. And when I come in, it was like six, seven, eight mil all over the place. So I think what John's going to do to get rid of that little shitty gap, he's going to force it up, stick some silicone under it, and hopefully that'll kill that. We sometimes got to think, oh, we've got to, oh, come in here, yeah, come in here, come on, look at this. So we're going to show you this, that you'll see that there's architrave everywhere bar here. So the tile has left it like this, which enables me not to get an architrave on. But with a bit of a discussion with Liam, I'm going to get some MDF, rip it down a bit smaller, and I'm going to put a quirk on the door here and bring it out to the tile, and then I'm going to architrave straight over the top and have like a double quirk, and that'll fix that. It's going to be a bit tricky down this side, though, but... I think we'll just get it in there. David, how have you enjoyed working with John on your own? It's good. You like it? Stop lying, David. Oh, that's not bad at all. <laughs> it's alright. Uh, well, it's a lot, isn't it, John? Yeah, that's it now. It's, it's come a long way, to be fair, hasn't it? Yeah, there's this cupboard, but there's no sea in here, really, it's is there? It's shit in it. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, you just see. I mean, it's all finished now. There's your manifold for all your floor eating, gas meter, boiler. Fuse board, they're all for the LED drivers. Um, toilet plumbing's under that. Back of toilet box, there, isn't it? back of sink, and he's going to box that in, and then there's going to be um, we're at tumble dryer we're putting in there. Yeah. Have you showed them outside now? Render's done. Yeah. You go outside, just have a quick walk around with Render. Right, so Liam will show you now. I'll just stand back and you can have a look now. We've put the charger port for the car on the front, put the alarm box in the middle, and we've also put them nice lights on the outside. I've also put an external socket here, a request to the customer. This is uh, the cooker hood. I need to just chop that back and put a little grill on the front and that's, that's done. It's all been rendered. I also just need to paint the bottom of that. We, in this house, it's very posh. We've got a cold tap and we've also got an hot tap outside. So if we want to wash his hands, need to put a light here. What's that uh, That's uh, an, uh, is it from the, in the bathroom or so? It's that. Uh, from the from shower, it's from the shower, we need to put a face plate right. on it. That's it, basically. Down. Right, so that's it. I know a lot of you have been asking where John and Davey are, so this is where they are. Um, where they're going next, they're not quite sure. Um, possibly to that house we were at in Linton, yeah, maybe. Um, or maybe something else in the pipeline, who knows. But that's it, it's come a long way on it in a, in a bloody long time as well. Through <laughs> no fault of anybody's really, I guess. So let's go and hopefully see Paul now. Right, so I finally got old Paul. He's a week late, are you? A week late? Something like that. But he has rained and he's been mad busy. Um, so John yesterday grew up with John. John lived just around the corner. Paul grew up with Paul, not since Paul I was a kid. And we lived on the same street, didn't we, Paul? We did, a couple yeah. of doors away from so each other. So we've literally known each other all our lives. Paul is a plumber. Yeah. Likes to be known as a plumber. He's obviously gas safe and water safe and every other safe you can imagine. And as I said yesterday, there isn't anything he doesn't know. 
like I'll say for instance, right, my boiler right comes up with a fault, I'll ring him up, he tells me exactly what the fault is. Went round my girlfriend's house the other day, her flush button's broke, the, toilet, the toilet's consistently leaking. I rang him up, fixed it within two minutes, she thinks I'm ace. Know what I mean? <laughs> Jobs are good. <laughs> right, so I've got Paul down because simply because obviously I'm on a massive budget. Um, not on a massive budget, I'm on a strict budget rather. Um, but I also want this to be the best possible job I can have. Right, so first things first, um, this is where the bathroom's going to be, Paul. That's yep. going to be the shower, that's there's the toilet, and that there is the sink. Okay. Over there is the kitchen. Right, so I've obviously got Paul here to ask him loads of questions because he like, knows the stuff about the plumbing and that. So my first question is, Paul, water supply. Now, my water is sort of like halfway down the house there. It's probably about 24 metres away. Yeah. So my concern was, do I connect it in the house or do I bring it from the main on the uh, coming into the house? Do you know what I mean? Because I don't yeah, want yeah. pressure to drop in my house when somebody's getting a shower down here. Okay. So preferably um, on the supply service pipe work to your property i'd be going off off that and put an additional stop valve in your driveway so the supply comes down your drive yeah goes off to your house carries on have another stop valve service valve here below ground yeah and then carry on up to this build so so because it's not coming in the house then if the if there's like loads of water being used here it won't affect the pressure in the house because um, that was a big concern like yeah so you can have an effect on pressure yeah um you know but that's all down to how much is being delivered by the water company, how much is in use, you know, the demand on the network. Because I do know sometimes, like, when there's only me and house and I'll be getting a shower and the water will just drop, and I was like, what the hell? Yeah. So is that because there's more, like, demand on the street? It can be that there's more demand on the street. It can be things like um, a third up service valve. You What's know? a third up service so, valve? So um, you might get bits of scale or grit deposits right. that's on the service valve itself. So maybe not necessarily your incoming, but maybe on feral as it comes off at main's water supply. Right, so, all right, so that's the so next question then is, um, my house is 1920s, I'd imagine, something like that. Yeah. I'm thinking my water supply is a lead pipe. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know, would it be, wouldn't it be? I've got a new stop tap, you know, with the water meter, yeah. but they, they never replaced any pipe bridge or all that, yeah. so I don't know. So um, do you know where your incoming supply is and can you see it? I can I can see the the new valve. Yeah, but coming into your property. No. Okay. Because I boxed it in years ago, like an idiot. Okay. So chances are, Liam, it probably will be lead. So yeah. lead's not good at all for you. So we talk about um, lead in water and the content. So the maximum permissible is ten micro siemens. That's that's in the UK <laughs> <laughs> of of lead in water. Right. In EU, the, it is five micro siemens. And they are, there was talk prior to us leaving the EU of it being dropped to five. So lead in water is really harmful to uh, women of childbearing age and it can damage the fetus and make it deformed. Right. So it's really, really critical that if you know you've got lead to get rid of it. Um, on lead service pipe work, what they tell you is to run the water off before you use it as well. So the typically, I think the lead time is about six hours where when you open up your tap they want you to run a couple of bowls worth of water off before you drink that water really yeah and that's to get rid of the higher concentration of so, dissolved lead you know i've got i've got this water meter yeah so yep. like i'm assuming it's lead coming into my house will it be lead feeding the water meter there's a possibility that it, that it will be what, what are the main pipes made out of they cast um there's a variation of it so you, you'll have um plastic pipe work or mdpe service pipe work there there is some old galve pipe work right um you know we've got lead um it it just depends and sometimes Liam, in the water um, industry they won't even know where all the service pipe work is because it's not being mapped out so on a job that Cause i went old. to because it's that old yeah um on a job that i went to we knew that there were 63 mil mdpe supply um in the street but coming into the property it were all lead and it fed an additional five houses and it's what we're known as a common supply so, and what happened on that job is you couldn't run a tap upstairs if anybody opened up the tap downstairs literally nothing came out right right um, and we were looking at getting a new service pipe work in that were independent so if i'm going to replace it then which which i will do um 
Um, uh, is it 25, that blue pipe? 25? Yeah, it'll be 20 or 25. You what know, does it want to be? Um, well, you can only go off what's what's coming in. So if at your meter it's 25 mil, I would bring in 25. Will it not be uh, Will it not be 15 coming in now? That's not possible. Um, no, it's possible. But right. what you will have is, let's say, for example, at your meter box, yeah. it's 25 mil, and then they'll have a reducer right. or an adapter that will go back onto your original lead. And sometimes there's copper below ground as well. Right. Um, so, but if it's 25 mil there, for ease sake, let's bring 25 down to here right you know okay so all right so let, let's let's recap on that then. so we're going to run a new 25 mil we're going to have a new stop tap we're going to tee off to my house then we're yep. going to have a stop tap yeah and then we're going to come down here yeah right so my next question before i forget and all somebody says that i'm not going to get a 25 mil pipe up that bend yeah that's it'll Is be that, really really tight he says get 245s and make it a slower bend yeah right yeah. okay right but, i'll adjust but, that Liam, i'd be tempted to um you can get like um, a ducting material from a drainage supplier that they use for pushing up cables. Um, you might have seen like on the street when they've done your fiber optics, they use like a corrugated flexible duct. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Um, I'd be tempted to change get rid that, of that. A, and put the flexible duct in. All oh, right, you know, okay. You'll get a well, more it's not a, too late now, so. No, it's not too yeah. late. You'll get a gentle bend, Liam, on it. Well, it's builders merchant somewhere. Um, or an online drainage supplier. I did have a look at it before I came here, so I've got a link on my WhatsApp that I've sent myself, so yeah. I'll send it on to you, because right. you get varying sizes. Okay, cool. Right, so we've got the water supply. Um, we're going to talk about gas and actually how we're going to heat the water in a minute. Right, my drainage, so I've got a 1 in 54 fall. Before we move off water yeah. supply, it needs to be 750 mil deep. Yeah, so I remember, right, so 750. So I spoke to building control, and they said I can put it all in the same trench, so I dig it down, put my water in, backfill a bit, get me waste in. Um, my electric. He said okay. it was fine. That's what he said. Yeah. So on uh, one of our drawings, that I've got. I've got. Um, it shows. I won't tell you which building inspector it was. No. It's okay. <laughs> so um, on one of the drawings that I've got, it shows water service pipe work, 750 to 1350 deep. But then it shows other services around it. Right. Um, so obviously I don't do electrical, but I'm pretty sure it's um, not in the same trench. So. Let me let me find that drawing. Right, a bit more research on that then. Yeah. And, and come back to you. Um, I know that gas is typically 450 below ground, but electrical, I don't know. Um, right. So oh, okay. Well, we we can we can research that more. Yeah. When right. we say same trench, Liam, not the same depth. You might be able to go same trench, water at 750. Yeah. Put 200 mil, put your electric cable in and your fibre, and then you know, and then carry on filling your trench, but. Let's double check that. Right. And, um, so, with, with regards to that, so 750 coming in, I can't get 750 there because I've obviously okay. put my foot in blocks up. But is, if I just come up at a bit of a bend and insulate it, would that be all right? Or? So, um, we need consent. So, if you want to be um, higher than 750 below yeah. ground, we can apply for consent at Water Company. Right, okay. Okay. So, right. and what, and they do allow it, but you've just got to apply for consent because I've, I've been to uh, jobs where pipe works frozen and it's not below and what's happened is they've rang the water board and said I've got no water the right. water board turn up and go it's only 200 mil below the ground well what so, so shall I just can't go it out then break it out and bring it in because once it's in the house it's insulated isn't it isn't it so yeah so once we, yeah sort of like within the thermal envelope of the building yeah. so um but what I would say Liam is um it can be insulated but it don't want to be like that gray um, DIY Polystyrene foam machine. Yeah, yeah, don't want to be that. Right. Um, we want like a waterproof lagging and what have you. But also we need to seal it to make sure that no moisture can get in and around it. Right. I'm going to can go that out up. then. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll can go it out then. It seems the best option. So back to the waste then. So my waste is coming in. Um, I've got my toilet there. Yep. Got my shower here. Oh, it's a bit bit wider than that. But like, and then a sink there, and obviously my door there. Yeah. So I don't want no boxing. In. Okay. Um, I'm going to have, I'm possibly going to make this wall a bit wider and have a wall hung toilet where the system's in the wall. Yeah. So then, like, you know, the right angle bend comes and yeah. drops straight down. So yeah. my, my plan is to put my bend for my toilet there, straight yeah. down, in wall. Yeah. Toilet back to the wall, so it's all gone. Yeah. What about the sink and the shower waste? Well, I'd be tempted, Liam, if you're going to have a little bit of a deeper wall here. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably looking at, I think them systems are about that, aren't they? I've, I've not long fit one, and I yeah. think there's something like that, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, they're, they're not that deep. Yeah. I think 150 is the minimum Right. Um, on it. So, and what I would be tempted to do, Liam, is if on where this toilet's sitting here, yeah. if you've got a bit of boxing in 
Are you having a shelf on top or something like that? What's no, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to build my wall a bit thicker. I'm going to sacrifice, I think what I'll do is I'll sacrifice a bit of that room and I'll move everything down a little bit there. But so yeah. I'll have, have a wall that's thicker like that. My, yeah. my system will be concealed. It'll be a push button and then yeah. a wall hung toilet. So nothing, nothing is there. You can't see yeah. anything. And then my sink, um, again, that'll be wall hung. Um, I don't want the cabinet or a pedestal about like that. So yeah. I want the waste to go into the wall somehow. Yeah. And I, I don't know where the shower, so. Yeah. So we're going to come, basically, so what I'm saying is, I'm going to have a, a waste sort of there. Yeah. And then it's going to run down this way and out through my little hole there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So on this lane, what we just need to be aware of is, um, when you flush your toilet, yeah. when you've got other services that are immediately nearby, it can create a vacuum. Right. Um, and it like sucks either water out or pulls the water down to draw in air right um, and then you'll end up with it'll either suck it out or it'll just dip allow the air in and then the water level comes back but what ultimately what happens is you end up with drain smells in bathroom right so, which we don't want which we don't want so, so so we need to avoid that liam and look at maybe splitting this service pipe as it comes in okay so um i'll shower's gonna be big i don't know where the waste is because i haven't bought the shower but you yeah. know you can you can rotate them can't you yeah yeah, do yeah. You know what i mean so let's let's say the waste is in that corner there yeah so we can we tee like that yeah but i'd want to liam i want we uh teeing in sort of like 50 or 40 mil pipe work i'd be teeing in 110 yeah um and bringing it across and then you know it, it, i know where below shower here but is, if your shower's not sat on the floor it could come into that void it could come into that void there so, so 100, 110 to there and then yeah. reduce it somehow yeah so they do plenty of reducers laying from 110 to 40 or 50 mil right what have you, you know cool. so. what, what what what's a shower generally is it 40 is it 40 50 30 um, it, it, it's typically 40 mil but yeah. some at european showers they come through and the 50 mil outlets on them so it depends ah right so once depends i buy on what it you buy yeah so just uh, right so what i'm going to do then cause in my mind the shower you'll step up into it like that so okay. um you know, I can I can buy a tray cart with the hole at one end. Yeah. And, and we well, it don't matter if it's if you're stepping yeah. up and it's off at floor. Yeah. The waste pipe can come through and into this void cavity. Ah, right. So yeah. Right. So all right. So if, if that's going off there, obviously you can't get a double T, can you? No. Um, you can get a double T, Liam. Can you? Um, oh, should I just come off there? I'd probably just come off there, Liam. So come off there like that, and yeah. then into the wall again. Yeah. So worst case scenario, then, if I've got a problem. Um, would I be able to rod it? I'm not going to rod it around there, am I? No, but at this point, Liam, you could, in effect, you could, Liam, because you can take your toilet off yeah. and then you're straight in here. Yeah. Or what's this room here? What's it's a bedroom. It's a bedroom. I, so, can, I, can, I can make, you know what I mean? Because there's got to be some sort of like wardrobe space, haven't there, or something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. I can have an access panel. Or worst case scenario, I mean, is it going to block? No, it's not, I don't think. No. So if, just not worry about it if it does. Yeah, if we look at, you know, like, um, future servicing and what have you, yeah. you can go really, really overboard and, you yeah, know, well, that's and honestly, look at your existing property. Yeah. You know, like in your existing bathroom, have you got access to rodding it in your existing bathroom? No, no. no. I, and so, I have had the blockage before and ended up just rodding it in cars yeah, and then everything yeah. cleared itself yeah. then, yeah. So, um, so yeah, th what I would initially do though, Liam, when you do this build, you can obviously build that wall and everything can come through and don't put this final wall on here. Yeah. Because then we can test for leaks and everything. Get everything right. And then, get everything and then right. board it up. And once yeah. you know it's right, it's right. Because yeah. I suppose if you do it right first, then it's, it's, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so got my water supply coming in. Got my waste from my bathroom, my sink and my shower. Yeah. And my toilet, obviously. Right. Um, my water's going to come in at the kitchen, yeah. I'm thinking there. Does that make yeah. more sense? Yeah. 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 So ki kitchen's obviously over here. Um, these are going to stand up like that. You know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. fall over kind of thing. Um, I think my waist. Let's say my waist comes up up there. Yeah. Or, or maybe it'd probably be a bit easier that side, won't it? Yeah. Um, so not some maybe what? Why? Sorry. So hot and cold. Right. Let's talk about heating first, and then we can talk about water supply. Okay. Yeah. How? Right. Right. So obviously, gas is obviously going to cost me a lot of my money. Yeah. But Liam, I look at this area and I think to myself, you know, like. A gas boiler running in running this it's going to want the bare minimum heat output you're only going to be using it for domestic hot water we've got to get gas from your property to here and not have more than one millibar drop as right. well in gas pressure so it, it's quite a long run it probably is doable but it's expensive and then you've got obviously it costs of your boiler 
a couple of grand, yeah. you know, and that's not installed, that'll be your boiler and flue. Um, then you've got your radiators, Liam, and we've got to get pipe work. Um, I would be tempted to put in, um, like in your bathroom, in your bedrooms, maybe a panel heater, um, the smallest one possible, because it's going to be heavy, heavily insulated, is this? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah lot, really well And then, said. obviously, we're studying sun here, so it's going to get sun quite a lot of day, and if you want heating and cooling, then I would just look at a small air conditioning unit for for your living room. So, so the guy who did, who did air con on a few of my garden rooms, he said that he would come up and sort me out, um, do the air con. Yeah, I mean, he might say, put it in your bedroom as well, you know. Yeah. Um, so is this a bedroom? That's a bedroom, that's a bathroom, and that's it's supposed to be an office, but... Yeah, OK. It, it's actually bigger than my small bedroom in my house, so it's, yeah. it's too big. It? Well, Which Liam, it might be that you have AC and heating, you know, in these three rooms, yeah. and maybe put a panel heater in your bathroom. Right, what, like an oil-filled rad? An oil-filled rad, Yeah. You know. Um It's small room in it, Liam, yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah, and it's highly insulated, like you say, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. Right, OK, so, right... Um, so, so how are we going to heat? How are we going to heat the water then? So um, we need to accommodate Liam um, a, an unvented hot water cylinder. So this will deliver hot water at high pressure. So it's you'd have mains pressure hot water. Right. But because of the size of this development, we've got to look at what your hot water usage is. So you probably your main hot water usage is going to be that shower. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. 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 So um, this is it's quite a small room really so if yeah. you put in sort of like a um, an 120 litre hot water cylinder unvented hot water cylinder it's going to take up quite a bit of room what, what i'd be tempted to do let me tell you that so the, there's a run there or that's where the plan is there's a run there for kitchen yeah i could possibly have a little return of kitchen here but it is tight for space do you yeah. know what i mean so go, going away from the stored hot water for yeah. just for running the shower i would look at just putting in an electric shower Right. You know, yeah. um, Myra's typically, a, you know, a good, reliable brand. Spares are available for years to come and stuff like that. Um, and look at something like a, a Myra Sport or I can't remember the name of the one, but they do one that's thermostatic. And that one would be one where if you have a drop in water pressure, so somebody opens up another tap or on the street, yeah. when the pressure drops at the shower, it doesn't all of a sudden overheat. It's thermostatically controlled right. so that no one's getting scalded. So I, I see, I've always had a, a combi shower, you know, that run off a combi boiler. Yeah. Any time I've had an electric shower at somebody else's house, I've, I've, I've hated it. Yeah. But have they changed now? Are they, are they a lot better? Um, it's not that they've changed, but it'll be down to things like water supply pressure coming in, the kilowatt output of the electric shower. So mo a lot of like cheap electric showers that are, that are sold, maybe hover around about seven or eight kilowatt. Right. But if you want some at decent, so Myra, I'm sure theirs is 11.8 kilowatt, so nearly a 12 kilowatt shower, right. but it'll deliver more hot water. Right. You know, so, okay. so that, that, so we want to go for a higher kilowatt electric shower, you know, right. tip, tip, it might not and be 11, it might be 10.8. Typically a Myra brand then you yeah, typically, it's a good... Yeah, typically, that, yeah, that'd be somewhat Liam that, um, you know, it's just, a reliable brand, well known, been out there for a very, very long time, and you can still get spares for the vast majority of their stuff. So cool, right? So we've got the we've got hot water in the shower. What about what about the sink? Because so, obviously so you, you want sink, so instant what, hot water to wash your hands. From yeah. The so you can get other inline water heaters, Liam, that are run by electric, but because we're going to have potentially twelve kilowatts for a shower, yeah. What we don't want is another, you know, six or seven eight kilowatt for running um, your kitchen sink and your wash and basin. Yeah, because then we're starting to get into a lot of power because I'm obviously going to have to have an electric oven and an electric hob as well. Yeah. So if everything's going at the same time, it's yeah. a lot in it. So what we would look at here, Liam, is um, I, I would probably look at either a 15 or a 30 litre um, wall hung over sink water eater or we say over sink it's not over the sink it'll go into a cupboard yeah so um what that, sort of size are we looking like so um well the 15 liters is probably about this wide yeah by about that and the 30 liters is probably about that by about that so, so, so for just washing up and washing your hands would you yeah. say 15 or 30 was it? i mean me personally yeah um are you having a dishwasher in here or not 
it's, it's, it's feasible, but I, I will have to look at space and then yeah. like cost I mean, them. That's going to be end of job in it, and I'm yeah. going to start well, running out of money. And... Do you know what, Liam? I would I would put in a 15 litre. Yeah. Um, it's going to just be for washing pots yeah. and washing your hands. You know what you just need to be aware of is the, the whoever moves in here is that it's not an instantaneous hot water heater. They haven't got an endless supply of hot water. So loads of people waste water. No. Um, they'll open up a tap and they'll leave it running. Yeah, so. and you carry on doing whatever you're doing, y don't you? Yeah, so yeah. well, what they just need to be aware of is, look, you know, we, it's going to cost money and they're going to run out. You know, if they leave that tap running, they're going to run out of water, yeah. you know, you know, fairly, fairly quickly. And then it's then got to reheat. So um, I would put in a 15, Liam. If you find it's insufficient, then change it to a 30. But... I don't think you will. I think what will happen is you'll manage it. You but, know. So like the long-term plan is, if I can't sell the house, then Liberty's going to move in here and feasibly yeah. Yasmin, do you know yeah. what I mean? And like, yeah. the, the they're going to spend more time in the shower than washing up because they don't wash up because they're tramps. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, so, probably a 15 then and yeah. see how we'll go with that, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, that'll go in the kitchen cupboard. Yeah. Um, and that runs off the pressure of the water. Yes. Right. Pipe work. Now I've got um, I've got access in ceiling. Yeah. Um, because it's it's a warm roof construction type thing. Um, yeah. but obviously I need to get my pipe work. I need to get the hot and the cold to their daughter. Yes. Um, and the shower's just the cold. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Um, so you'll have one of each. Yes. Yeah. So so what I would be tempted to do, Liam, is where your mains cold comes in. Yeah. We go obviously we're going to go feed your kitchen sink. Going to go into the hot water heater and back out. Yeah. At this point here. I would be branching and ducting from here to there, two ducts, one for hot water, one for cold, and bring it up at the back of your toilet. In the, in the wall? In the wall, you know, and then from there, we can split. You know, you can go to your shower, and you can go to your wash and basin. So, so obviously, this is concrete level there. Yeah. So, I will punch a hole in this wall, get it under insulation. Yeah, I mean... Is this double skin Liam on that No, it's, it's single. So there's just this this wall basically is to it's to divide the rooms, but the reason why it's block and it's on a footing and foundation is because it's gonna support the roof as well. Do yeah, you know what I mean? Okay. So but I, I can pop an all in it, it's yeah. not, not well, an issue. I've got um diamond card roll, Liam. We can just diamond car a nice couple no. of neat holes. Right. Cardless. So what, what ducting is this going in? Um it can go in that um like a corrugated flexible duct. Right, you know? size. So um well we want it to be able to it really I'd probably want to lag it, Liam, you know, right. underneath. So I'm going to say something like 60 mil or 63 mil. I'm not sure. We'll have to have a look, Liam, online. Right. Yeah. At this link that I've got. Um, but I would run it in, you know, 60 mil so that it can be insulated. And then if ever there's an issue with this pipe here, yeah. um, that's a fault because, and this is where we're talking about redundancy, as in, are we ever going to have an issue? But, you know, I, I'm going to say, look, let's just future proof. If we've yeah. got an issue with that pipe, it can just be pulled out and another one can be pushed back in. Yeah, because I mean, it's not even a long run, is it? What no. got there, maybe? No, that's what I mean. Five so you, metres? Right? Yeah. Um, so, as far as. We'll have a stop tap coming in, yeah. off, at, off at cold, and then will we have a, a manifold or anything like branching off yeah, from the hot so and cold? And... Come in, Liam, we will have your mains service stop valve, we'll have um, a double check valve and a drain cock. So these are just standard things to do with water regulations. Right. What's and then, a double check valve? So it just prevents um, water travelling in the direction that it's not intended. Back down the line? Yeah, back right. down the line. So if anything happens in here, it's not going to siphon the water from in here or any other risk out and into drinking water supply. Right. So it's just, um, that would be known as like bound, what we call boundary protection, you know, property. Right. Um, or of this build driver. And then... It, point of use we have other backflow protection so your taps will have an air gap your toilet if you're going for wall on um if it's something like gebrit or grower that'll have grower that's yeah it'll yeah, be grower. from costco and that's what they sell so <laughs> right, okay. is that so, all right that bad fit a couple like that yeah no grower's good right yeah, yeah. grower's good and it's typically got an approval so either ras nsf kiwa right. um i think the german one's nvgg DW or something like that, um, but it'll have backflow protection built into the cistern right. and the toilet frame and the whole backflow arrangement's called an AUK one. That's what it's called. Uh, so, um, so, will you have backflow on on the taps for the the sink and, and the shower? Yeah. So it'll, on your taps, if you have a mixer tap, yeah, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll be what then you'll just have two single check valves on it, yeah. one on the hot, one on the cold, um, and then on your shower, 
um, we look at um, on the Myras, it should have a retaining ring and that stops the head from dropping below the spillover level of the shower tray. On your taps- Is that what that's for? Yeah. I know what you mean. It's on, it's yeah, on no pole, one, No it? one fits them. But, no. <laughs> but then what happens is, you know, like the shower. So for example, here where you've got your toilet, yeah. that shower head, if you had a really long hose and there were no retaining ring, that shower head could reach into the toilet. Right. So yeah. in the toilet, obviously, it presents the highest possible risk to human health. There's yeah. all the bacteria. Of course, yeah. Um, so we want to prevent that from happening. So there's a retaining ring. It's a simple backflow protection uh, product, a retaining ring. Um, but people, they'll assemble them uh, riser rail poles and yeah. then they'll go, oh, I've got this, and yeah. sling it. Because they've assembled it all and screwed <laughs> yeah, it all yeah, up. Yeah. Looks good, and then there's yeah. this little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, don't um, it, don't it, mate, don't so and then so your basin taps, Liam, there'll be an air gap as well. So from the outlet of the tap to the spillover level of the sink, yeah. there's an air gap. And it'll be the same with kitchen sink with that, with that tap. So you're fully protected in here. Right, I mean. Um, and obviously when the job's complete, Liam, we'll give you uh, what's called a Reg 6. So that's a contractor certificate to say that everything that we've done complies with the water supply, water fittings regulations, 1999. Cool. Right, I'd see fucking plumber. <laughs> a little bit more than the plumber. Um, I don't think there's anything else, is there? No. Um, I don't think. I don't is, think. is it easy? Is it going to be easy enough to connect? To, obviously, you can turn the water for the stop tap anyway, yeah. right? So I'll have to dig down and find the back side of it. Or uh, dig down, but yeah. when this supply goes in, Liam, it wants um, disinfecting and chlorinating. So before we connect back to that, yeah. we need to disinfect our line. So before I buy. The, the blue pipe, the, what is it, MDEM? MDPE. Do I need to see what size it is before I buy it? Yeah. Right. Um, would I better see that by looking into it? Um, possibly, if any of the pipe works exposed. Right. Um, what I'd be tempted to do is try and find where your supply is coming in, you know, and maybe dig down and also find out if that's lead. Because it might be that you might have, let's say you might have a metre of MDPE, you know, coming in. Right. Or, um, well, I've been in it, I mean, how long's that stuff been about? Because I've been in here probably 15 years now, and I've, I've never had any water work done at all. Yeah, it's been about longer than that. Oh, so, um, when did your meter go in? Um, <laughs> the meter went in, went which left? Um, <laughs> Does she follow you on Facebook? I don't on know. Facebook, I on hope, YouTube? I hope not, um, because I thought I'd save myself some money. Um, <laughs> it's probably maybe eight years ago now. Right, okay. Um, so I don't know, I suppose, I, I, we can have a quick look, see if we can see out, but, but what you're saying though is before I get my blue pipe, realistically I want to dig down and yeah, find, find what out. my supplies coming into the house, yeah. coming in there. Yeah, yeah, because if, if you know where it's coming into your house, yeah. if it is, let's say for example, it tracks down your drive and if that's in lead and it goes into your house in lead, yeah. we want to be changing that. I think it is lead. Um, yeah. I just seem to remember because what I did, like like an idiot and like, like you do when you don't know what you're doing, um, I, I built a bit of boxing in the downstairs toilet and the, the, the pipe was sticking out, you know, the stop tap. Yeah. So I cut it off and bought it off. <laughs> no, it's not all bad. But then I moved another one to the other side, but obviously that's sat in there, they're prone to leaking out yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. carry on. But um, I do remember that, um, it being lead because I'm looking at it, going to change it, and I'm almost sure for I ain't touching lead. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can yeah. push fit a copper, but lead's yeah. a different kettle of fish, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what are they call lead, lead locks, isn't it? You can get lead locks, but I yeah. mean, when you've like, when you cut lead, so if the water companies know where lead is, yeah. they dose the water supply. Um, I think the, the chemical is, I think it's osophate right. or osophate. We'll have to just double check that. You know, um, I'm sure one of your, um, your watchers will, will comment on it. But basically, it um, helps prevent leaching of, of lead. And it sort of like lines the lead pipe work so that it doesn't leach um, or reduces the amount of leaching. But what happens Does that is, mean the lead's coming in the water? Yeah. Right. But what happens is you cut it and you break off some of that protection. Yeah. Also on the end, you've got fresh exposed lead. Of course, yeah. And then you connect your new fit in and you will have, at that point, high levels of lead, you know, probably greater than 10 micro siemens, but this is where they want you to be flushing your line through. But, so going back to you're on a water meter, and yeah. I'm saying if you're on lead, you need to be running a couple of bowls of water. You're actually, you're wasting water because yeah. you don't want to poison yourself or yeah, your yeah. kids. Um, so I'm sure there's an argument there to go back to water companies and say, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm having to do this for safety. 
Um, we need to sort out my bill. I, I'm, supposed, I, I'm surprised that I'm, that I'm flagged up somewhere because that yeah. is a safety issue, isn't it? Yeah. Um, right, well, so, I mean, I thought in my mind, I was like, get this concrete and then we'll start building again. But obviously I need to dig down, find what my water supply is. I need to get my hot and cold feed through here before I get yeah. the insulation in and my concrete and everything like that. Um, obviously I need to get my falls right on my waist. Need to measure this out properly, get my waist coming up within the stud wall, yeah. which is ideal for me. Um, I mean, Liam, you know where we've drawn this here? Yeah. Um, it might be... I mean, it's not to scale, obviously. No, know. but you know like where we've branched off here? It yeah. might be prudent to actually have that in a manhole cover outside, you know, rather than underneath here. What, and bring all three out? Yeah. Hmm. Will I get three through there? Probably will, what? Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, because you've got that. Uh, um, probably not, but... Um, I might, I might. Well, are they actually 110? Is that the outside diameter? Yeah, so speak to ah, Liam. 300. So obviously drainage is not, is it's plumbing, but it's not plumbing, it's drainage. Yeah. So speak to one of the, um, there'll be somebody on your YouTube who does drainage, um, you know, civils, and, yeah. and talk to them, what, what would they, what would they do? You know, I know from the jobs that I go to, um, with regards to the siphoning, because we're trying to, as you flush, you send a slug of air, compressed air down, yeah. and then it then wants to drag afterwards. Um, so you can put air admittance valves in, Liam. So in here you could have a, some pipe work, soil pipe with an air admittance valve on to help reduce that. While we're on that, that's just reminded me. So will I need, is it a Drago valve? A Dago. A Dago? Yeah, so that's an air admittance valve. Will I need that? Um, if you've got the space in here, Liam, put it, put it in. Well, well, there will be because, I mean, I'm feasibly, are you, are you, have you got any? Are they asking you for an event outside as the building no, control guy said? No, um, I'd, I'd put an air admittance valve then, Liam. So, yeah, what I could have is like a, um, a pipe coming up like that, couldn't I? And yeah. my sink could just boss into it then, couldn't Yeah, it? so but it yeah. wants to be higher than the cistern, does this? Oh, pipe. so we were talking like yeah, that, either, yeah. yeah. But if you've got yeah. this void here, Liam, I'd just take it as high as possible and then right. you're just giving enough volume of air to, yeah. to drag in. All right, well, that, that's a question for guys that do civils then. So basically, I've got sink, toilet, shower. I'm wanting to tee into one pipe, preferably. But is it better if I just can go a bit more of that out so I can get three full pipes out, have a, man man, a little manhole outside, and then return back to one pipe? So if you work in civils and you know that, that'd be nice if you could leave a comment on that. Um, is that it then? I think that's it. We'll have a look, Liam, now on, uh, on them links that I've sent myself for that ducting. Um, and, and that's it, you know, when you bring it up in here, Liam, um, you've got, that's all, that's wall and basin. Yeah. You, is it, it's going to have to have a pedestal on it and what Do have they you. have a half pedestal then? You can have like yeah. a half pedestal, yeah. but there is I mean, some. you might have a cabinet yet, Paul, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Do you know there what is mean? some nice stuff. If you put it on a cabinet, Liam, yeah. um, if you put a false back on it, what you could do is bring your hot and cold into the back of that cabinet. Yeah and then branch off from there. So, Got so within the cabinet, if you go, I want to isolate my shower, you just, from there, mm. turning off the shower or turning off the toilet. If that's feasible then, would it, if put false back in it, would it be prudent then to put um, a rodding, a rodding pipe there? Or, or, or like you say, we're not, not going to need it. You never need yeah. it in my house. I've lived there all yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah. So worry, if there's worry. a chamber going outside, Liam, yeah. sorts of civils guys, um, then obviously we can come up um, you know, that's not an issue. With this lame, this really ain't an issue. Um, I mean, it's to, such to a short one. The, the, the only thing that would block is the toilet anyway, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Well, Libby's well, hair falls out at a rapid rate. Yeah. So <laughs> what you need to do is, um, obviously you'll get a shower trap, but yeah. you've, you've got them where they catch all hair and stuff like that. Yeah. Just make sure you're just emptying it, you know, once every two weeks, I'd say, Liam. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, I don't have that issue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not far behind you now, mate, I'll tell you. Um, right, so I told you there wasn't stuff that he didn't know. Um, I, I told Paul, loads and loads, he needs to get himself on YouTube because he would absolutely smash it. But the problem is, Paul does a lot of high-end jobs. He does a lot of commercial jobs. He does a lot of jobs where you couldn't be filming, really, could you? No. Um, Which is annoying because I know in the plumbing world, some of the jobs he do, you'd like proper, like, love it. Yeah, I've, I'll... Um... What I'll do is I'll send you some footage, Liam, of a job that, we, that we're that we just about to complete. Um, so in the next sort of like, I don't know, a couple of weeks, um, we're handing over a job. I'll send you some of the stuff that we've installed Yeah. Um, that, you, that you can share. But there's a lot of, like I've started working healthcare. Um, we do some really, really, really 
good, enjoyable work. I do it. I love my job. So, um, so I'll use healthcare as an example. Yeah. You know, we do some really, really good um, iron jobs in there, immaculate pipe work and sanitary wear that's gone in, but it's not appropriate to be filming. filming you know what I mean? Yeah. So. yeah. Which, which is disappointing because there's a, there'll be a lot of plumbers out there that just do domestic and that and like. And we've blown away with some of the stuff you do, I know that yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I work a lot in the food industry, so, yeah. you know, if you open up your fridge or you open up your cupboards, whatever products are in there, guarantee I'll work at one of them manufacturers. Um, but again, it's not appropriate to be yeah. to be filming, you know. We've, well, not just filming, but your, your phone contains glass and stuff like that. It's just not professional, you know. I'd have some fantastic content. But, <laughs> Which is annoying, it is um, annoying. You know, it's it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, it is what it is. It's just like you know what you you know if, if I did it, I'd be out of a job. Yeah, that went straight away. So when, when did you last do any domestic stuff? Um, well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I avoid it. I totally avoid oh, well, it. Well, I, I, I can't remember the last time you told me because years and years ago, I remember you'd like do a bathroom, but you'd do the tiling and everything, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, tiling. I started off in domestic. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so now if somebody rings for a bathroom now. I tell them I'm busy for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> but like you're laughing, Liam, the customer laughs. Yeah. You know, but it's just... Back. <laughs> in, 10 in 10 years time. <laughs> Hello, Paul. You know, you said you'd oh. fit me in. I'm like, oh my God. So what else I was going to say to you is always like, how many, how many gas supplies have you condemned? Because I know when you come round to do my ball, you condemn me gas supply straight away and cut it off. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. Um, do you? I don't remember that. Well, no. that this house or it? Yeah, no, but this house, um, my boiler died and then put some money into it and then it died again. He come round and fit me a new boiler and the minute he got here, he just cut gas off and condemned it. <laughs> <laughs> he had to get British gas out. We must have had an issue with regulator then. Yeah, oh, we did, that were it. You there had was to... something leaking on me or something. I think it was you the want... side, is it, when it's on it the It wasn't side? a leak, it was. Yeah. There were an issue with your regulator. Right. So the incoming supply pressure were yeah. lower than what were permitted. I don't know how you even remember that, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what, well, if I'm ringing them, it'll either be for a leak, but if it were a leak, you'd have known about it. Yeah. Um, but I'm almost certain it was your regulator that, that, that were the issue. But I, I have mean, been that... on the job, but I can't bring it to mind now when you condemn that as well. I think it were a four story block. Do you, are you, are you don't remember it, it were up Moor Town, it were a four story block. Um, and so the gas pipe was inside the walls and you come out and there was gas leaking because you tested it. Right. And they had to like redo the full block and all gas pipes going up outside the walls. <laughs> Those posh houses. <laughs> well, <laughs> you won't remember that, will I you? I don't remember that. It were up Moor Town, it was. I don't remember. Maybe I vaguely, vaguely remember. You had like a, a thing with like a flexible pointy hose on it that smells Yeah, so that would mean the gas, gas sniffer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So That's it's it. um, obviously really critical that people, you know, use a gas safe engineer to do the gas work and what have you. Don't DIY and get your gas appliances maintained by, by somebody who's registered. Yeah, I, know, I must e admit, every, I'll, every year. I'll, I'll do a lot of stuff, but I ain't touching yeah. gas. It's just no, crazy. I'm I mean, you've got a prison for that and all the way, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's... Um, it's dangerous. Yeah, to say the least. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, so this is Paul. Um, Don't ring me for a bathroom. I'm busy for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, cool. Brilliant. Thank you. Right, so here's my stop top. You can just see. I don't know if you are going to be able to see it. So I certainly can't. Have a look there. I don't know if you can see the blue pipe there. Um, and Paul tells me that's 25 mil, so we can connect to that, no problem. Um, and what he's saying is, if you see where that tarmac square is, they potentially have joined to lead somewhere under there. So what I'm going to do is dig down from a drive, tunnel under a little bit, find that joint, and that's where we're going to connect to. And don't forget, um, all the links are at the bottom of the page, yeah? If you want to donate to PayPal, that's absolutely amazing. Loads of people have already, which is absolutely brilliant, and I really thank them. And all their names will be going in the time capsule, which will be getting buried on this job. So if you want to donate, if you like what you've watched and you want to help keep the channel going, then go on the description below, hit the PayPal link, and absolutely anything will be a bonus, so I'd appreciate that. And if you want to buy a raffle ticket, then get yourself down the link as well. There's a link there for raffle tickets. There's one for build packs for timber frame garden rooms as well, which I do as well. Um, link to my Facebook page, link to my Instagram page, all them kind of links. And I'm also going to be throwing in a raffle video on a regular basis, simply because if you don't want to donate to PayPal, then maybe you want to buy a raffle ticket. You're also helping charity as well, Candle Lighters, which is helping the fight in childhood cancer. Um, and we'll talk about that at a later date but I've raised over £205,000 now
which is a massive amount of money. Um, so we will talk about that a later date. And if you're not interested in watching raffle videos, just skip past it. But, you know, they are going to make a showing because I do need to try and finance my life because, um, as you know, everything costs loads of money. Right, do you want to win this massive DeWalt bundle? If so, you need to watch this. Pay a slight bit of attention, because I know some of you struggle, right? And then you need to get on raffle. You need to find me, yeah? 18.3 thousand followers, 60 raffles, 88 winners. And for the guy who says, how can you have 88 winners when you get 60 raffles? It's often more than one prize, as there is in this one. So this is not even the first prize, yet it is the best prize. Right, let me explain how it works for you. It's two pound a ticket, right? If you are lucky enough to win, there will be six prizes. Your first prize is an iPhone 15, over a thousand pounds, yeah? Your second prize is a pass load, first fix gun, yeah? And it's the good one as well. Second prize, don't worry, limbs, I'll keep moving back. Third prize, rather, is the pass load second fix. Fourth prize ugh, is the iPhone. Fifth prize is, the... yeah, all right. Fourth prize is the iPad. A big, big iPhone, wasn't it? Fifth prize is the Insta X4 360 camera, and that's a good bit of kit. And last but not least is sixth prize, which is the robot vacuum cleaner. Everybody must want one of them, surely to God. Right, here's the twist in the tale. You win one of the prizes. If you come first, you will have left your number on raffle, yeah? So I will ring you up. I will ask you to pick a box. There are seven boxes. You will get first choice, okay? So if you come first, you will get first choice. If you come second, guess what? You're right, you've got second choice, and so on, right? Inside of each of these boxes will either be A, a cash amount, and they'll be all different, or B, this little lot. There's 7,000 pounds worth of DeWalt tools there, and it is going away regardless of sales. So you're gonna win one of these six fantastic prizes if you are lucky enough, and then if you are double lucky, you will pick a box, and in that box may be the DeWalt kit, and it's only two pound a ticket. Get yourself on raffle, look for me, follow me as well, buy some tickets, and win big. Right, thanks for watching. Please like, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, notifications, and share it to your mates if you've enjoyed what you're watching. And I'll see you very soon. We'll hopefully get this base in, we'll get the concrete in, we'll get the building inspector around. He'll sign off up to DPC, and then um, we can have a little think about starting to build it then.